If one talk honestly, they almost talked, uh, you know, short of saying either the military colluded, connived, or ignored. Now, certainly there was a late response. For several years, he said, for several years, bandits are occupying schools and nobody has done anything. I find that inconceivable. Several years, what the governor said, several years, not just uh, before Christmas or two days before Christmas. Then, in all honesty, we are moving towards a failed state. If, if, I underline if, if this statement by the governor is true, that bandits are occupying schools for several years in Plateau State, not in the border area of Nigeria, then honestly, we're a real problem. But I would like the uh, the president has weighed in. But what I want the president to do is to find out what each stakeholder did from the moment this attack was, uh, you know, was signaled up to the last point, including this claim that we have uh, bandits occupying schools for several years in Plateau, and yet nobody did that. Nobody did anything. It is really, really sad and bewildering. Thank you for tuning in to this video. I will urge you to watch this video to the end because this video has a lot of information that you must have been looking for. If you are concerned about the killings in Nigeria, about the crisis in Plateau State, and the multiple um, Fundani, Hesmen, Nashis, and Boko Haram, I think this is the right video for you to watch. This happened on the live session on Chinese television politics. They were addressing and interviewing some persons, including the retired soldiers and some revenue from Plateau State. What they said is very, very terrible. I can't even believe that such a thing is going on in Nigeria. In this video, you will find out that terrorism in Nigeria has a global headquarters and they have an agenda. I am not the one saying this. This was said on the national television. Please help me share this video. Make sure that everyone listen to this video because it is very important for us to know where we stand as a nation and what is going on in Nigeria. Listen. If one talk honestly, they almost talked, uh, you know, short of saying either the military colluded, connived, or ignored. Now, certainly there was a late response. For several years, he said, for several years, bandits are occupying schools and nobody has done anything. I find that inconceivable. Several years, what the governor said, several years, not just uh, before Christmas or two days before Christmas. Then, in all honesty, we are moving towards a failed state. If, if, I underline if, if this statement by the governor is true, that bandits are occupying schools for several years in Plateau State, not in the border area of Nigeria, then honestly, we're a real problem. But I would like the uh, the president has weighed in. But what I want the president to do is to find out what each stakeholder did from the moment this attack was, uh, you know, was signaled up to the last point, including this claim that we have uh, bandits occupying schools for several years in Plateau. And yet nobody did that. Nobody did anything. It is really, really sad and bewildering. Governor is very, very present for the statement he has made. Why do I say this? Anybody who has been following what has been going on in Plateau State, well, in Nigeria for about 20 something years knows that, and uh, speaking, judgment has already fallen. Justice is very far away. Truth has fallen in the streets. This is not a time for anybody not to be politically correct. Anybody who is not politically correct is making himself a target. So I want to commend the governor because in, even between the lines, you know, the little he has said, the truth is this, it's not just schools. There are at least 112 villages in Plateau State that have been occupied and the names of the villages have been changed. If uh, the, the TV station will send its crew into Plateau State, the indigenous there will talk to you and they will let you know that at least 112 villages have been taken over and the names changed and the indigents have gone and what the governor said is true this is not starting this time so if we want to find a solution to these things we're going to have to step up our architecture of thought not only that we're going to have to step up on courage now i'm talking about the president and look what exactly is different this time that has not always happened what promises have been made that have never been made now the reality on ground is this the diagnosis is wrong. I don't know how many decades we're going to say this on TV and people are going to continue to die. Have you forgotten that wherever uh, uh, poverty has been weaponized, as we are going through this right now, those who are planning these things know that Nigeria's memory is short. 
by the month of February, by March, a lot of news will have come. This would be, you know, something past and forgotten. So if we're really serious about getting to the root of these things, let's not even look at this, just this incident. The motors of Paranda has always remained the same in Plateau State. Look, like uh, my friend was saying earlier on, the attack started about, I mean, I was talking to, just after they buried those in Yanga today, the 12 people who were buried, six bodies were taken away to their communities. Look, I was talking to some of the people who had gone to help to conduct the burial, keeping notes on what is on ground. First of all, the figures that we are quoting are small compared to the real statistics. And if we don't have the courage to face up the truth to the truth, how are we going to really solve this problem? Look, the attack started about 6 p.m. Up on the way till 12 at night. It went on, continued the next morning. And we don't have the courage to face up to the fact that, as we have said to you, we are fighting a Hydra. A Hydra. It has a local face. It has a global face. I want to, I won't mention the name of the government in Plateau State. So years ago, I was in Plateau State when troubles were in the heat. And I remember I was asked to address the cabinet in a closed meeting, a security meeting. And when I had the cabinet in this way, indigenous and all that, and I was asking them, what do you think is going on here? I commended them for their courage. But by the time we finished that session and the governor too came in to come and listen to the reality of what was going on in their area, they had to admit that this is much bigger than Plateau State. These things that we are talking about here has a global portion to it. You are talking about how that this time around, listen, the letters that this attack was going to come had been sent by the 15th of November. Sorry, yes, by November, the letters had come and they had already said that they were going to start the attacks by the 15th of December. And there was a promise that this was going to be the mother of all atrocities. Ask anybody in Plateau State, they will tell you what I'm telling you is truth. Now, is this the first time? No. Let's mathematize this thing. Go back to the Nikitobi report as far back as then. Begin to take note of some simple things here and there and decide for yourself whether we are really serious that we want to put any value to the lives of people who are being killed year in, year out, not only in Plateau. Now, what makes Plateau, you know, precious is this? These things have gone on not east, not west, but it is glaring in Plateau because of the makeup of Plateau. Now, if we can get it right in Plateau, we will get it right in the whole country. But the question again is this. Do we have what it takes to realize that we have a systemic problem on ground? Can you go back and remember that in the days of the Nikitobi report, there was a federal uh, panel, there was a state government panel, and that you could even see the dynamics already, the tensions, for the fact that even many former presidents in this country have told you that even in their cabinets, they have the people who are upholding this hydra. How long will it take us to stop this charade and the crocodile, crocodile tears year in, year out, or pretending that we care and as if we have something we want to do when the will to get anything done has not yet been put together? Nikitobi report, if you remember very well, the commissioner for police in the Nikitobi report was Frankly speaking, it was there in black and white. The recommendation was that he was to be sacked with ignominy. The question you ask yourself, if you want to admit the truth to yourself, is this. How did that same person end up as Inspector General of Police a few years later? It's not that they, I mean, the majority of their, of their home was killed. His father's blood was on his body, was how he escaped. I remember in his case that he was telling me this person. He scaled the wall, and when he scaled the wall, he saw what he thought was a Nigerian army. And he ran towards them shouting for help, they opened fire on him. And then he ran back. And fortunately for him, he ran into the genuine Nigerian army later on. When they ran among the, general, the Nigerian army, those people were not afraid. They were still chanting songs. They still wanted to come and fetch him out until the, the, uh, until the uh, commanding officer he declared that he would open fire if those people dared to step. Actually, it wasn't the commanding officer. It was just one of the regular soldiers in there who said, if their commanding officer would allow this to happen, what am I saying? You are dealing with a very clever hydra that has been working on dividing the forces. You heard about what happened with the police force? Are you thinking that they haven't been working on the Nigerian army? When were you, when the Nigerian army began to have policies that when they capture, remember in those days they captured Boko Haram uh, 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 terrorists, and then they would claim they've been debriefed, they've been this, and they are now joining 
the Nigerian army, and people rationalized it. Where were we when all that was happening? Now, let's be very frank. Every army depends on the chain of command and the word of command. What happens when you allow a Hydra that understands that to infiltrate the ranks? If I want to sit down here and I give you 10, 12 situations that have happened through the years in Nigeria, where there's an obvious disregard. Don't let me talk about what is going on in Plateau State right now. I want to say that it's a good thing that uh, General E. E. Absalam has the trust of the people who are there, right? But we still need to check the chain of command because at times when he has given an instruction, down the line, we're talking all the way down to the sector commander and all that, we need to go in and check loyalties. So what am I saying? One of the things I've said for the past 20 years is this. What you are dealing with is a Hydra, it's a shapeshifter. It is something that has the ideology backing it up. It is masked under religion. I've told you so many things that this thing does, and if you are really ready for it, you need to be able to gather. In Nigeria, you put together about seven, 12 people. I mean, right now, this is where I miss the late AVM uh, Bamfa. He is one of the people, who, at least I know, who understood thoroughly the global perspective of what was going on in Plateau State. Because he had the opportunity to see the workings, you know, from the global uh, perspective. We all know that it is asymmetrical warfare. We know that it uses hybrid threats. We know it is opportunistic. We know these things. We, I mean, we can, have you forgotten that December, was it 2011, the Madala Christmas Day bombing? Was it not from uh, uh, Lagos that the man who led, who, 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 who captained that bombing, traveled from Lagos two days before to Niger State then? Why are we pretending as if we don't understand? This thing is as simple as ABC right now. Practically all countries in the world have come to grips with it. Why is the titan of West Africa now here? Why are we pretending as if we don't know the obvious and trading away politically? What we know that at the end of the day is a displacement sequence. Listen, what is going on in Plateau State is nothing less than a genocide. Why it can go on like that is because the foreign exchange value reflects the life of the Nigerian on the global level. Don't forget that the modus of Brandi you saw this time was that the perpetrators were even taking videos. Have you forgotten what happened on the 7th of, of, of uh, October this year in Israel? Are you saying that we cannot begin to con concatenate and easily see how these things work together? Let's be very frank. If we are ready to collect to to, 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 to to correct the systemic flaws in Nigeria, it won't take us three months to wipe out this menace out of Nigeria completely, reduce it to an irreducible minimum, and set a pace for the safety of Nigeria, West Africa, and of course our continent, which is you know where this is still going at the end of the day. And then I want us to know something. Look, we need to be truthful to ourselves. Some years ago, if I remember very well, there was a massacre I think in 2018 in that same, was it Plateau State? Yes. When the uh, Macban, what's his name again, uh, Daniel Di Chiroma, made a very insensitive statement afterwards and said uh, it was because of 300 cows that were uh, rustled um, earlier. Of course, later on, they came back to come and deny a whole oh, 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 lot of stuff, but begin to join the dots. Look, from the global perspective, about two, three years ago, there came a list that was sent to Nigeria as, uh, as a sponsor of terror. The most, the, the richest sponsor of terror was in Kaduna State. The government said it was going to have private prosecutions. Who in Nigeria till today has heard the names of the list of the sponsors of terror? Now, let us be very frank. I don't want us to say that the previous administration, what we're talking about here has been ongoing for many administrations. But I remember at one time I had a meeting with one of the former generals who was the president much earlier on, who said, oh, in his own time, there was no this and that. I said to him, sir, I was in the field. We have mission fields. We take care of people. We take care of widows and orphans. So don't tell me stories of things that I have seen. And when people like us talk, we, we, we have to put the, it into consideration that the public is listening. So they, we, we only scratch the tip of the iceberg. Look, in that same plateau state, go and find out. There was a, a, a house, one fellow whose name I will not call, because I spoke to the, to the governor when the issue came out. How many uniforms were being sold in this house? It was meant to be picked up. If I go on into the other conversations that went up in higher places over that issue because we pursued it, you'll be shocked. So what are we talking about here? No, the truth is this. 
If we want to face this thing, we must develop the will to realize that we need a coordination. There has to be a coordinate. We say it's a hydra. A hydra means it has different heads. Now, the beautiful thing about what we're saying here is this. The people who are doing all this are a minority. I'm talking about terror intelligentsia. They are a minority. One of the greatest advantages we have in Nigeria is our sheer size. We can't be swallowed in one piece. So if we're able to build consensus and face our systemic problems in Nigeria, honestly, in three months, we will wipe away this problem. Let me leave it at that. Don't forget that politicians only live for the next election. We need to gather statesmen, patriots, people who have something at stake and who have the courage. They are the ones who need to gather together and build consensus and raise the strength. That is, we need to, uh, how do we call it, strengthen the will of Nigerians. And if at all, we're going to go for gun laws, it has to be done legally. Because when it is done illegally, then everybody has a home. But if we leave it to, you know, to become a free for all, you're going to find out that the better organized end will win. You are dealing with the Hydra. That Hydra doesn't have only one military wing. Don't forget there were times in the past when the ISWAP was hunting down the Boko Haram and taking over. Don't forget that the one who terrorized Nigeria the most, the Nigeria army never located him. When Iswak gave him a notice to quit as head of Boko Haram, he took Iswak only about four days to locate him and neutralize him, even though he did not detonate the bomb and, you know, he didn't go alone. So please, in other countries, people realize that the trust of the public, the coming together of the people to have a unified will, a country that shows that it cares for the value, the life value of its citizens, is the country that will beat this threat. Because if we continue with this piecemeal thing here and there, you are dealing with the unopportunistic thing. The enemy is opportunistic. It is extremely intelligent. And the way we're going about it, what I feel for, look, people like us in our sisters, we, we've seen the best of Nigeria, as it were. It's very unfair to look at the younger generations and then subject them to something that you know is not going to lead anywhere. Right now, what is happening is that there's an older generation that is taking away the future of the younger generation and that's what's really going on so we will either build consensus get patriots and statesmen face systemic problems put together the architecture of thought that can handle this issue once and for all and also ensure that the media aspect too is properly put together because these people have been known to exploit everything now even in the army don't forget that when the nigerian army was put together when they came from the West African Frontier Force, the British put in between us the divide and rule interesting thing. So even within the army, the divide and rule foundation that we had from independence was even though the esprit de corps was quite strong for some years, but when it came to promotions, this and that. Now, can you imagine an intelligent army who now, an intelligent enemy that is more sophisticated now, who now wants to start dividing and start fracturing uh, the army? Is he going to carry a placard on his head? That's why I'm saying that the architecture of thought required for this is not something that will be found in in, 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 in Crossroads Trinity of War or old textbooks or, or, or military that nobody, you know, no other country of the world is looking at anymore. So please, let well, us give value to, to the lives of the people who are dying. Now, the idea is this. We're not asking the civilian not to defend himself or herself. But what we're asking is this, is that don't leave it, don't let it be illegal. No, don't allow, okay, look at uh, Plateau State for instance now. All the vigilantes, most of the people killed this time around were vigilantes. What are they using? Pump action, at best pump action. A lot of low velocity uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, kinetics. The people who came in on motorcycles, 300, sometimes up to 300, to come in and circle the villages. Go and ask about the, the, the caliber of weaponry they were carrying. The logistics behind that, anybody who understands that you don't just grab such weapons in the streets, knows that there's a lot of intelligence behind them. So what we're saying is this, for the Nigerian citizen who has to defend himself, let us make sure that we build consensus for the will to, be, to make sure that it is legal for you to purchase the action you need. Look, let's not de 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 deceive ourselves about these things. These things have been going on for 20 something, if not much more, odd years. So there comes a time like I said, the governor of Plateau State, I commend him. 
I didn't even expect him to speak that much. Because anybody who really understands the situation, reading in between what he has said, would realize that is this man does he really want to continue as a politician? Because he seems as if he cares for his people. Okay? So I would rather say that the building of consensus should be left to statesmen, patriots, people who don't have any elections at stake. And part of what we need to do is to address the systemic problems. Or else you'll find out that one person, one mole in the corridors of power, one wrong influence somewhere, a lot of devastation will always continue to occur.